indicate to you when the class of 05 is marching toward us. And that uh, front end of that is right outside the door here. So when they reach that point, they'll be getting ready to come into the auditorium. So again, uh, please, um, out of respect for the participants, if you would turn off all your cell phones and pagers. Thank you.
Aren't you applauding a little early? You haven't been given your degrees yet. <clears throat> but may I, while you stand, may I introduce to you for the sake of the invocation, David Teedy, president of Luther Seminary and coming to the college, Augsburg College, next fall as the first occupant of the first endowed chair in our, the Bernard Christensen Chair in Christian Faith. David? President Frame, members of the Augsburg community, I am grateful to join you in the Augsburg adventure, and I'm honored to offer the invocation on the occasion of this commencement. Sylphie, there we go. I imagine the journey ahead for all of you graduates, I found myself remembering a prayer of a great British missionary and explorer, David Livingston, who said, Lead me anywhere, only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, O Lord our God, for Augsburg College, for its light of faith and learning, its love of the world and of this city in which it lives and serves. Lord, sustain Augsburg College for generations to come. May it be a beacon of your love for all the earth and its peoples in their joy and in their sufferings. We pray for the faculty, the administration, staff, and boards who bear the burdens of its wonderful, difficult, and transforming educational mission. You have not promised it would be easy, but we rely on your presence with us. Send to us those who can join this venture of faith and learning the next generation of students, the alumni and friends who will care, and those with a calling to invest in its future. Show all of us your ways, O oh Lord. Above all, we pray for these graduates, their families and friends, past and present and future, gathered here and watching from the heavenly gallery. They have begun strong in their learning. As they go on their pathways of which they cannot see the ending, Teach them your ways, O God. Go with them every day throughout perils unknown. May they learn the joy of your presence, and may their lives bless their neighbors and the world that you so love itself. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Please be seated. As we move toward the point where we really can shout for you, let us note that we have been processed into this hall by Roberta Kagan and a junior in the college, Michael Groves. And we are grateful for that, and we are grateful to you who are composing the class of 2005, the largest graduating class in our history, at what turns out to be the 136th uh, year of the uh, life of Augsburg College. Thank you for coming to this college. Thank you now for leaving it with such grace and manner. <laughs> Let me remind you of a, a few things about yourselves. 355 of the 630 of you who are graduating are traditional day students, 144 weekend college students. Thir <clears throat> Sounds like a larger crowd than that, doesn't it? 33 of you are from the Rochester program, and nine, oh yes, right. And, and what will the nine from United Hospital now do? Four from the 3M program and 85 students. Whoops. That's. Not, well. <laughs> uh, 
Eighty-five of you are from five of our master's degree programs. Yeah. Our oldest graduate this year is a weekend college student who at the age of 65 is receiving her bachelor's degree with a double major. She is apparently somewhat shy and will not allow us to name her, but she is a major in secondary education and history. I'm honestly not doing <laughs> On the other end of the continuum, there are six of you uh, who are only age 20. Stick to it award goes to three weekend college. <laughs> I wanted to say that three of you have taken 21 years to get a degree. And it seems to me that that's worth noting. Thirty-three states are mentioned here, are, are represented here, and at least 17 countries, and there are parents here from Tanzania, Colombia, and Nicaragua, at least. Thirty of you are graduating with departmental distinction in your field of study. Nineteen of you are honors program graduates. And I am ple pleased to share with you the fact that 79 of you are graduating cum laude, achieving a grade point average between 3.6 and 3.79. 60 are magna cum laude graduates, achieving a grade point average between 3.8 and 3.89. And 11 have reached the highest level of distinction, summa cum laude, achieving a grade point average of 3.9 or higher. You'll find reference to these particular people as you listen to their uh, announcement as they walk across this stage. I hope to a relative level of silence, but we shall see. Um, you have been host to some of the nation's preeminent speakers on the leading issues of today and better yet, of life itself. This was Augsburg's year to host the Nobel Peace Prize Forum which uh, this year was uh, convened in honor of Shirin Ibadi of Iran. This is also the 35th anniversary year of our Pan-African Student Services, one of the strongest programs of its kind in the nation. <laughs> Apparently there are representatives of that group here. We salute those who have dedicated their time to its success and those of you who have benefited as students both in this graduating class and among our many distinguished alumni. At least a dozen of your classmates have been honored for their academic achievements on the regional and national level. Nearly 200 of you completed independent studies or internships this year, and more than 100 of you studied overseas, taking advantage of Augsburg Center for Global Education and other associated programs. Twelve of you are McNair Scholars, selected in honor of the memory of the NASA mission specialist Ronald McNair the African-American physicist who was aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger when it exploded in 1986. The McNair Scholars Program has been dedicated to the high standards of achievement inspired by Dr. McNair's life. And as you may know, the State Department made some kind of a goofy error and didn't renew the funding for our McNair Scholars Program, and the college picked up the tab and has kept it going with pride and confidence that it's a wonderful program. Indeed. I would like now to present this year's Marina Christensen Justice Award, and I would like to ask this year's recipient, Tony Shodden, to make his way forward.
to make his way forward as I tell you more about the award and about him. Each year, this honor is presented to the graduating senior who best exemplifies Augsburg's motto, education for service. The student must have demonstrated a dedication to community involvement as characterized by the personal and professional life of Marina Christensen Justice, a daughter of Bernard Christensen and an actual acquaintance of mine in Chicago, who courageously and effectively reached out to disadvantaged people and communities. Tony grew up right here in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood and has been a member of the Trinity Congregation, which long before his time in the year 1872, brought Augsburg College from Wisconsin to the edges of the oldest park in the city of Minneapolis, Murphy Square, and now meets in the Hoverston Chapel on our campus. He has been a longtime volunteer with the Safe Place Tutoring Program. At Augsburg, he has held uh, numerous uh, positions of leadership, one of them as chaplain of the Pan-African Student Association, organizer of Peace Day in the Park. He served as a member of the outreach ministry team through campus ministry. He's done service learning at Women Against Military Madness, been a key, key volunteer with Campus Kitchens, and been a regular volunteer and youth mentor for the Wednesday Night Out program in the neighborhood. In the coming year, he's going to continue this activity uh, by taking up work in Brazil and Africa under the auspices of the Wapagasset Luther Bible Camp. Through Tony Augsburg's motto and the ideal established by Marina Christensen Justice lives on. Please join me in saluting Tony as the 2005 Marina Christensen Justice Award. I would like now to introduce to you one of the quietest but most powerful voices in education in this country and I think around the world. Parker Palmer has had a profound influence on this college. He has been preoccupied for a very long time with this notion of a whole life in which the alienating forces that are at work perhaps in our original souls are overcome by a kind of self-discovery that involves the fusion of faith and reason and the discovery, therefore, of our calling or our vocations. This voice and this thought has been profoundly influential on me personally, on any number of the faculty at this college, and presumably through them, on you. To hear this voice in this place is a very special gift to us, and we are grateful indeed. You will find all sorts of information in your bulletin about Parker Palmer, but one piece you will not find is that about an hour ago, Augsburg College presented to him for the first, fourth time in our history the Augsburg Medal. He follows, therefore, in the train of the King of Norway, Herb Chilstrom, our graduate and the first bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and Charles Anderson, president of this college uh, just ahead of me. It was a great honor for us to present this award to Parker, and it's a great honor to have him here now to speak to us under the title, Living the Questions. Please welcome him. Thank you so much. To the Augsburg College class of 2005, my heartfelt congratulations. You have been brought to this moment by your own hard work and devotion. But as you all know, you would not be here had it not been for the hard work and devotion of other people. So may I speak on your behalf and say to family members and friends, to the Augsburg faculty and staff who have walked with you toward this day, 
Many thanks and many blessings. I'm very honored to have been invited to say a few words on this important day of your lives, and I've thought long and hard about the responsibilities of a commencement speaker. I think they are two in number. First, of course, I need to give you advice. I need to give you the kind of advice that will help you make this awkward transition from graduation day to your first social security check which may look more like a lottery ticket by the time you get there. <laughs> now, I note that one member of your class has al is already arrived, and um, <laughs> you might want to ask her what it takes to get to where she is. I have to assume that your future success depends heavily on my advice. Indeed, I have to wonder how you made it this far without my advice. <laughs> Second, I must keep my advice relatively brief. I need to understand that at this very moment I'm blocking the doorway between you and your future, and I need to try to avoid getting trampled in your understandable rush to get on with the rest of your lives. When I put these two points together, I realized that I started training for this job 60 plus years ago. I was raised by a father who gave my two sisters and me the perfect graduation speech at breakfast every school day. Dad had a thousand aphorisms, brief and pithy sayings designed to point us kids in the right direction. It seemed like he had a thousand, he probably only had 50, which he recycled constantly. We'd be almost finished with breakfast, my sisters and I, when Dad would look at us and say, just remember kids, Add a little oomph to try, and you get triumph. Now, off you go. <laughs> or on another day, he'd look at us and say, just remember, there's only one letter's difference between hero and zero. Now, off you go. <laughs> or on another day, just remember, kids, the only difference between a rut and a grave is dimension. Now, when you're in the sixth grade, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And you go to school feeling a little gloomy and not knowing why. But there was one piece of advice that he always aimed directly at me. He never looked at my sisters. He looked me right in the eyes and said, just remember, Park, today's peacock is tomorrow's feather duster. <laughs> so when you get the Augsburg Medal, it's good to remember these things. If I had any sense, I'd simply say, off you go and sit down, having delivered succinct advice from a highly reliable source, my father. But there are a few more things I'd like to say, starting with a story from my adult life that always comes back to me when I think about commencement. It's a story that happened about 20 years ago. I was in my mid-40s. My life was getting a little routine, a little dull. I felt I needed to shake it up a bit. So I decided to go on the wilderness adventure program called Outward Bound. Some of you know about that, I'm sure. All right. I uh, chose to go to the one at Hurricane Island off the coast of Maine. Now, the name should have given me a little clue as to what I was in for. <laughs> if I had, to, uh, had it to do over, I'd look for the program at Happy Valley or Peaceful Garden. But I went to Hurricane Island and paid good money to spend a week doing things I would not normally do under threat of imprisonment. We rowed huge, heavy boats. We swam in the cold September Atlantic waters. We climbed impossible hills. We jumped, and somehow I survived. But in the middle of the week, I faced the challenge that I had most feared. At the top of a 120-foot cliff, that's a 
12-story building the challenge they call repelling. I call it repulsive. <laughs> I was given a harness that went around my midsection, to which was attached a very thin and long rope, which looked to me like it was unraveling, the other end of which was in the hands of a total stranger who looked quite weak and incompetent. <laughs> I was told with this demonic device around me to back up to the very edge of this 120-foot cliff. This is the part that reminds me of graduation. <laughs> and start walking down to the rock quarry 12 stories below. Right. So I asked the outward bound instructor what I was supposed to do, and he said, you need to lean out backwards as far as you can in order to get the pressure of your feet fully onto the rock face. Well, I knew he was wrong about that. I, I knew that what you have to do here is hug the rock to survive. It was big, but huggable, you know, and, which I tried to do as I stepped off the edge. The result was a bone-jarring fall in which I nearly took my chin off to a ledge that jutted out about eight or 10 feet below the lip of the cliff. At this point, I looked up rather timidly to see the instructor peering down at me and saying one of those teacherly things. I don't think you've quite got it yet. <laughs> right. So I asked him to tell me again what I was supposed to do. He did. I tried to take his advice this time, and slowly, miraculously, it started working. Step by step, I worked my way down this cliff, my eyes affixed on the heavens in prayer and also with the sense that if I rolled my eyeballs, I might shift my center of gravity and <laughs> lose my balance. I was starting to feel pretty confident until about halfway down, the instructor down below yelled up at me, Parker, you better stop and see what's happening just below your feet. I stopped, I rotated my eyes downward very carefully, and I saw that a hole had opened up in this rock face, or I was approaching a hole in the rock face, and I was going to have to work my way around it. And I froze. I was paralyzed. I hung there for what seemed like an eternity. And after that eternity had ended, I heard the voice of the instructor down below saying, Parker, is anything wrong? <laughs> and I heard my own voice, a squeaky, tiny little voice coming from regions I didn't even know I had, saying, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> There were a dozen people on this trip with me, and I still get Christmas cards from people saying, you ready to talk about it yet? So. <laughs> she said, then it's time for you to hear the outward bound motto. And I thought, it's keen, I'm about to die, <laughs> and she's gonna do to me what dad did every day, give me a useless motto. And she shouted up, the Hurricane Island Outward Bound motto is, if you can't get out of it, get into it. If you can't get out of it, get into it. Somehow those words bypassed my arguing mind, bypassed my frozen emotions, bypassed my stuck willpower, and went directly into my body where they moved my feet, and I made it safely to the ground. It's an experience I'll never forget, partly because I still have nightmares about it. <laughs> so by way of advice for the road ahead, the one that lies before you as you make your way down this cliff, I want to draw five very brief lessons from my story. First, we never outgrow our need for teachers. You have been blessed with good and great teachers here at Augsburg, and if you are not missing them already, you soon 
will as you face into difficulties for which there seem to be few answers. So as you go down the road called life after college, stay alert for your next teacher and the next and the next. It may be a family member, a friend, a child, a stranger. It may even be a so-called enemy. If the teacher does not appear, reach out for him or her. Your need for a teacher will draw that person to you if you make your need known. I've asked lots and lots of people to tell me about their best teachers, to tell me what made them good. And almost invariably, I hear this phrase, this teacher saw more in me than I was able to see in myself. That is what my teachers on Outward Bound did. They called up a certain courage I did not know I had in the midst of my paralyzing fear. And I'm grateful to, to them for this gift because Hurricane Island was not the last time in my life that fear tried to block the way. In this sense, life itself is the great teacher because life constantly invites us to find resources we did not know we had in the midst of disappointment, despair, and catastrophe, as well as in times of fulfillment and joy. Know that you have what you need for all of life's moments, but know, too, that you can keep looking for teachers who can call out those qualities in you. Second, a second lesson to be taken from my story. Whatever good and true thing you want to do, go ahead and take the first step, even when it seems to be into thin air. I am not inviting you to practice foolishness. I had a safety rope around me when I stepped off the edge of that cliff. But I am inviting you to cultivate the trust that allows you to take creative risks. Of course, the big enemy of trust and risk-taking is fear, but here we can take good counsel from the religious tradition in which this college is rooted, be not afraid. Those words do not say that you should not have fear, which we all do, at least I do. They say you need not be your fear. Right alongside our fear, we have other places within us, places with names like hope and faith and trust. We can look at the world from those places instead of from our fears. And when we do, an interesting thing happens. We start to see that the rope we have been handed is not unraveling, and that the person who is holding the other end of it knows what to do when we start to fall. Everything looks different when we see it through the eyes of trust. When you take that first step, you may have the same experience I had on Hurricane Island. I fell and hurt myself a little. But as time goes on, you may also find, as I have, that falling, even failing, is worth the price because that is where we do our deepest learning. I have never learned much from success. In my case, at least, it simply leads to self-congratulation. But falling and failing cause me to ask the deepest questions about myself, my world, and how the two are related questions that give me real guidance in taking next steps. Most people, by the time they've finished college, have fallen and failed at something they care about. So perhaps you have already discovered the gift of guidance that is hidden in failure. Here's a third lesson from my story. When you face into that fear as you step off the cliff, don't be like me and say, I don't want to talk about it. Instead, seek out people with whom you can tell it like it is. Just think of how much damage is done in our society by people who hide their truth, their emotional truth, because they don't want to talk about it. At the Enron Corporation, many who worked there sensed that something was wrong long before Enron collapsed and did such damage to our economy and to the retirement savings of many, many people. But these people did not want to talk about it. At every public school that has been decimated by physical violence, there were people who knew that something was wrong with individual students and sometimes with the whole culture. But they did not want to talk about it, and their silence helped set the stage for great tragedy. 
So my invitation is that you become creators of community. Community doesn't need to be a big deal. It can be three or four people who know that we connect most deeply at the broken places of our lives, the places where we are fearful and wounded, people who trust each other enough to tell the truth, communities of this sort that empower people to tell the truth and follow it with their lives will both support us as individuals and bring new health to our institutions and our society. A fourth lesson from my story is this. Know that you have an inner guide, an inner teacher, a true self who will be there for you when all else fails. In our everyday lives, most of us depend on something else to see us through, something other than true self. We may depend on the intellect to analyze our problems. We may depend on the emotions to energize us toward taking a next step. We may depend on willpower to keep putting one foot in front of the other. We may depend on our egos to deal with all of life's demands. But in life's most demanding moments, these faculties often fail. Intellect offers no answers, emotions get short-circuited, the ego is shattered and willpower disappears. For a moment, on that rock face, that's how it was for me out on Hurricane Island. And it is in such moments that we learn that deep down inside we have a reliable friend, an inner guide, an inner teacher, a true self, a soul that will come to our rescue if we let it. So give yourself the gift of times of silence and solitude to become better acquainted with this soul-deep resource that is the birthright of every human being. On this Outward Bound program called Life, taking time to be alone with true self is just as important as taking time for community. And finally, a fifth lesson from my Outward Bound experience. I want to repeat those words that bypassed my mind, aroused my inner teacher, and caused my legs to start moving. If you can't get out of it, get into it. Of course, there are some things that you can get out of, and you should. A relationship that kills your spirit, a job that contradicts your most basic values, habitual ways of thinking and acting that do not lift your hearts. From these things, of course, get out, get out, get out. But there are other things that we can't get out of, so we had better get into them. And one of them is to fully inhabit ourselves, which means making the most of our gifts and being honest about our shadows. In this culture, we spend a lot of time avoiding ourselves, especially the things that are problematic about us. But if there is anything we can't get out of, it is the mixed reality called self. And the more I can embrace the whole of it, aware that I am both shadow and light, the more likely I am to live a life of value to myself and others. As we do so, we will find other things we can't get out of, things we are compelled to do because they preserve and extend our shared humanity. I mean things like working in ways that honor the integrity of the soul and the needs of the human community. I mean things like loving each other in ways that allow each of us to grow toward our highest possibilities. I mean things like living in ways that contribute to justice in its many forms, recognizing that a society is measured not by how successful its strongest can become, but by how well it cares for the weakest in its midst. These human imperatives are things we really can't get out of, so we had better get into them. And when we get into things like these, we find ourselves empowered in a way that goes far beyond our own personal resources. We release the powers of the human community and more. We release the power of the spirit that created and cares for all of us and for all of life, the spirit that is forever making all things new. We come down the cliff to the ground of our being, where we are all in this together, where we are all safe at home. So congratulations to all of you, and many blessings for your journey. And as my father would say, off you go. <laughs> Thank you.
We promise to do our best, sir, in the case where we can't get out of it, to get into it. Thank you very much. Um, we're uh, going to sing now, but not quite the song as I understand it that's inscribed on the, uh, on the tune, right? It's actually the Augsburg hymn that we're going to sing. Isn't that right, David and Roberta? Yeah, there are enough people here, we think, who know this tune that we can sing along with them. So we haven't provided you with the music because we're getting more and more familiar with this, and I'm sure it's built into your voices right now. So let's try it. That is clearly on the way to being a bestseller. <laughs> Three of you would like to address you from the constituencies that make up this class. And I would ask them to come forward and follow each other in the order which I suggest. Glenn DeHolst will be speaking to you in the name of the graduate students. Gretchen Hemmingson will represent the day students, and Nicholas Shum will represent the weekend college students. Um, Glenda? Good afternoon. It's a privilege to represent students in the programs graduating new master's degree holders today. Nursing, physician's assistants, education, social work, and my colleagues in leadership. If pursuit of a bachelor's degree guides us to learn how to learn, then in the master's quest, we are challenged to learn how to know. One thing I know is that I'm a storyteller, so I'll tell you one. A story about seeing our way through the ethical swamps that life insists upon us. A gentleman in my hometown brought many things back to Missouri when he retired. Among the dazzling gifts and 400 file cabinets worth of papers was a sign that sat on his desk. The sign said simply, the buck stops here. Just past that sign on the smooth, shiny wood, history marched to and from that old desk. It was clearly visible at eye level to this young girl. When the man knew that racial segregation was safe for him and his party, he picked up a pen anyway 
and desegregated the American Armed Forces and Civil Service. When it came time to decide whether to drop atomic bombs to end a war more swiftly, he made that decision. The buck stops here. Sears lessons that get richer every time they come out of the memory bank. It's unlikely that any of us will have to make choices of the enormity that landed on President Harry Truman's desk, but each of us wrestles with ethical decisions. Jean Rowley, who was the ethics trainer for the FBI office in Minneapolis long before her national fame, told agents, there is a gray area between right and wrong where competing interests sometimes result in ethical dilemmas. We should be willing to devote enough thought and reflection to make the gray area of moral relativism as thin a line as possible. In this first decade of the 21st century, though, our society's surroundings suggest more failures than successes in keeping the gray area of moral relativism small and that line of demarcation thin. Tales of people who fail these tests tumble from the news. Dennis Kozlowski, Maurice Greenberg, Ken Lay, Bernard Evers, Martha Stewart, Tom DeLay, Armstrong Williams, and Jason Blair. Surely these folks had at some time heard admonitions like Rowley's. Surely they had heard it from teachers or preachers, from an elder or an epistemologist, a statesman, or even a storyteller. Why then? are so, um, so many apparently successful people unable to make that line as thin as possible. The geometry is familiar to them and to us. As students at Augsburg, we've explored the twists of the ethical line with models of the human condition, from Sophocles' Creon, from Plato, Maimonides, Confucius, Moore, and Luther, from De Pizan's Lady Rectitude, from Nightingale, Adams, from Mill, Kant, from Robinson and Seymour in this room, from Burns and Kellerman. Perhaps the commonality among those who fail the tests of ethical decision making is that those who choose poorly have heard, but they have not seen the way. In the Augsburg leadership model, consideration of ethical conduct lies within a sense of vision. That's a good and proper home. It's a personal place where one can see inward and outward, knowing the complexity, accepting responsibility, shaping opportunity. It's the place where the buck stops. Here. Thank you. As a child, I loved to play games. The games that captured my heart were board games. You know, hi-ho, cheerio, Monopoly, sorry. They were all okay. But the board game I religiously played was the game of life. You know, the game with little people. Men were blue, women were pink. None had movable arms, and we all just had one big, thick stump for legs. I always chose to be the pink stump. The game of life exemplifies actual life. This board game of life demonstrates to us at a young age the right decisions we must make. But the best thing about actual life is, you don't have to land in the squares. You don't have to even stay on the board. You don't even have to play the game at all. 
Today, I'm here to tell my fellow day college students three pieces of information and advice. Go off the traditional road, have no regrets, and now is the time. In the game of life, you have to hop on your one-legged pink stub along the road that runs through the board to collect money, the most life tiles, and have the highest dollar amount at the end of the game. I'm here to tell you to stay off the path. Make your own path in life. After all, this is the only one you get. Take time, even if it's a day, a week, a year, or two, to do anything or be anything you've always wanted to be. If you wanted to try a deep massage, try it. If you want to be the next American Idol, go for it. If you want to work at a liquor store and play video games with your college buddies all night, play away. If you want to join the Peace Corps, call them. If you want to build houses for Habitat for Humanity, grab your tools. If you want to gallivant around Europe for three months and decide when you get there that you want to stay for an extra five, book it. Right now, you have no payments on your loans, at least for six months. That's what financial aid told me. <laughs> Most of you don't even have a wife, family, husband. You have no 401k to invest in right now, and we're not going to get our Social Security anytime soon. So what are you waiting for? Now, some of you may be thinking I'm being a glossy-eyed, flower, hippie child, but I'm not a child. I'm a flower-eyed, glossy, a hippie adult. I'm only giving a practical modification in the game of life. I decided for myself that I would not live, in, live on regrets. The object of my actual life will be no regrets. It's easy not to take, to take risks because you're afraid of the consequences or even something bad may happen to you. It's true, something may, bad may happen to you. You might waste time, money, get an emotional bruise or a physical scar, but you will have no regrets. What I'm trying to tell you is that anything that is worth doing is worth some sacrifice. As Tom Hanks said in my favorite movie, A League of Their Own, it's supposed to be hard. Hard is what makes it great. If it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. The rules in the game of life state, always move your car forward in the direction of arrows. Just as in actual life, you can't move back in time. This is the one rule I'm gonna have to agree with in the game of life. You're never gonna be younger, never gonna have fewer obligations or more time. People talk about how they, have, they will do things later in life as, there's an, as if there's an ideal time to follow your heart. But this is it. There's no better opportunity to live for the moment. If not now, when will you? After you establish your career, after you get married, after the mortgage is paid off, after your kids graduate, after you retire? If not now, when? Games are games for a reason. In board games, there's always a winner and a loser. But in actual life, in the end, it's what you decide to make it. Now is the best time to follow your heart. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much. I'm, my name is Nick Shum, and I'm proud to represent the Weekend College Class of 2005. The last commencement speech that I gave, I was in the fifth grade, and I got up here, I had, I had the D.A.R.E. t-shirt on, I had, I had my spiked hair going on, I had the old 80s thing. I, I don't think I wore my Zubas because they were in the wash that day. Um, and at that time, I wasn't really old enough to realize how nervous I should be. But today, I, I am. <laughs> in my work, I work as a social worker, and I do a lot of driving. And when I'm driving around, I'm obviously inundated with the different commercials that come on the air. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to say, the one that kept coming on was, get your degree, set yourself free. So, you, you know, you know how that sounds, and it sounds, it makes, it makes college sound like such an easy thing. Like, you know, you just kind of roll up there, it's like you're going through the McDonald's drive-thru, 
You know, you, get, you order your Bachelor's of Engineering and you just kind of drive through, you're, you're gone to the happiness, you got a happy life, you're, you're, you're rolling. But in reality, it's not, it's not easy, it, it's hard. And we've all sacrificed to be here, and it's, especially my constituents in weekend college. Uh, it was, it was, and really it was hard in ways that I didn't expect. And what I want to talk about are four things that weekend college taught me that weren't on the syllabus. The first, college is not a sprint. In fact, it's a long road. As, as uh, President Frame said, there was somebody who had been in college for 21 years. I've been, I've been in school for eight years. I know some of my classmates have been in for over 10, double digits. And it's, it's only because of our dedication and our stubbornness that we are able to be here today. And it's our ability to continuously show up. I know that there, there are also a lot of uh, young people here that, that still have to do some, you know, some more coursework or something like that. And I leave you with a mantra that one of my professors left me and it helped me during my last trimester was, you will finish if you don't quit. And I like that because it makes it easy for me. All I have to do is not quit. I can get frustrated. I can stop for a while. As long as I continue on, I'll be okay. The second thing is that professors were not our only teachers. We learned a ton from our classmates. Our shared knowledge and experience, uh, it just made for such an enriching experience here at, here at Augsburg. Um, for me, being in social work, I work with a lot of young mothers, and I was blessed to have five young mothers in my, in my class with me. And, uh, you know, I just, I feel, I've learned more from being in class with them than I could have, you know, in any other, you know, book or, or in any other situation. The other thing is that weekend college students tend to bring a, a developed passion to, to back to school. They've maybe gone out and done some things, decided maybe that's not what you want to do, but they, they've figured out, they've grown and decided that, hey, you know, this is what I want to put my time to, and that's wonderful. The third thing is that although it doesn't have to be perfect, it does have to be done. <laughs> I think as, as overachievers, we tend to, tend to put all this pressure on ourselves to you know, get A's and do, do so well. But, and, and I think we do that in, in because we, we want to make sure that the sacrifice we're making to come to school and to get our degree and all the years that we've been here is worth it. But what we find in the end is that this myth of perfection it isn't valid. It, it's just not true. And there comes a time in any assignment or speech where uh, that, that must just be realized. And the last and absolutely most important thing that I learned in weekend college is that I couldn't do it alone. I, I, I really want to express my gratitude to all the people that have come here and are sitting in the, in the bleachers today and have helped us get here and supported us through our times. They're really heroes for us. Um, and for me, my biggest hero is my mom. And actually, I don't even know where my, my parents are. Could you wave or something? Where are you guys? <laughs> they're, they're up there. Okay. So my mom, so my mom is my hero because she consciously sacrificed for me as a child growing up. And one specific instance of this was I was at, um, I worked, or I'm sorry, she worked downtown, bus to, I was at daycare, I was a young child, and she would have to run from the bus stop to my daycare in order not to get extra fees charged. And for me, that was just one of the many, many, many things that she did to, to make me the man that I am today. And I know that with Mother's Day happening tomorrow, I, I thought that it was, you know, it was good for us to, to kind of really, really make note of that. And uh, that's about it. So well, I leave you with the words of Garrison Keeler. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. Members of the Board of Regents, faculty emeriti, distinguished guests, members of the Augsburg community, 
alumni, students, family, and friends. On behalf of the faculty at Augsburg College, upon whose recommendation these degrees are granted, and in their name, it is my privilege to present the candidates for the degrees Master of Arts in Education, Master of Arts in Leadership, Master of Arts in Nursing, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies, and Master of Social Work. Mr. President, in this 136th year of Augsburg College, I present the graduate class of 2005. Will Will the candidates for master's degrees please stand? By virtue of the authority entrusted in me by the faculty and board of regents of Augsburg College and upon nomination of the faculty, I now confer upon you who have completed these requirements the degrees of Master of Arts in Leadership, Master of Social Work, Master of Arts in Nursing, the Physician's Assistant Program, and the Master of Arts in Education. Please be seated. You're going to be asked to come forward as directed by marshals. The provost will announce your names. And uh, Jean Taylor, the chair of the Augsburg Board of Regents, uh, will help me uh, congratulate you. And we will be assisted by your teachers in the fields of your degrees uh, who will hood you. And then we will turn back to the rather larger crowd of undergraduate students. That's next. We will begin with the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Vicki Olson, Associate Professor and Director, Master of Arts in Education program, will assist in placing the hood on each candidate. Danielle Bundy. Tracy Wilk. Linda Cohen. Congratulations. I will now read the names of candidates for the degree of the Master of Arts in Leadership. Norma Noonan, Professor of Political Science and Director of the MAL program, will assist in placing the hood on each candidate. Glenda Crank Holstey, Joni Marty. Ida Ayalu, Catherine L. Rumsa, Shakita S. Snelson, Susan Headland, Judy Nimi Johnson. Marilyn D. Anderson, James N. Hennan, Wendy E. Nimitz, Pamela Peter, Johnson N. Guacolo, Maria L. Roots Moreland. John Y. Brownell, Catherine M. Kellett, Ann Ottinger, Gretchen Lee Knudsen,
Sheila A.C. Anderson. Eddie Frizzle. Congratulations. I will now read the names of candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Nursing. Cheryl Looning, professor and chair of the Department of Nursing, will assist in placing the hood on each candidate. Virginia C. Carlson. Elsa Colorado Carlson. Sandra Marie Littlejohn. Sharon Marie McGill. Pauline Jean Utash. Sandra L. Smith. Lisa Carol Carter. Congratulations. I will now read the names of candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies. Don Ludwig, Director of the Physician Assistant Program, will assist in placing the hood on each candidate. Sheila K. McIntyre. Angela Marie Green. Patricia Lynn Rodriguez. Sherry Hogan. Sky Jennifer Peltier. Sarah M. Hoffman. Joy Yang. Leonid A. Pugach. Georgia Ray Underwood. Jennifer Ann Maynard. Gail Marie Hansen. Erica Lynn Rodell. Ricky Yokyu Chan. Brian Anthony Butkus. Michelle Track Glued. Jennifer E. Olson. Cora Lee Piney. Angela Peterson Kramer. Jacqueline J. Polipnik. Jessica Lee Hawes. Rebecca J. Wilson. Nicole Christina Noreen. Lisa M. Menke. Shannon Michelle Christofferson. Melissa Capellan Dvorak. Congratulations.
I will now read the names of candidates for the degree of the Master of Social Work. Lois Bosch, Associate Professor of Social Work and Director of the MSW program, will assist in placing the hood on each candidate. Melissa C. Scanlon Conley. Amanda M. Gleinberg. Sherry L. Smith. Louise N. Howard, Ann H. Nowlin, Renee E. Souter, Angela R. Hoffman, Angie H. Nyhart, Sarah J. Rorick. Sarah H. Johnson, Melissa L. Hall, Jennifer C. Whetstone, Nicole Miguel, Robert E. Hansen, Joshua R. Court. Carly B. Krieg Jacobson. Monica L. Handloss. Jessica L. Kemmer. Britt E. Johansson. Jeffrey L. Rach, Jennifer M. Peterson, Lori D. Kinstad, Jennifer S. Lynch, Jessica E. Casilius, Monica A. Palmer, Kelly J. Lloydolt, Katie J. Cohn, Judy A. Elling, Tanya J. Seabach, Christina M. Olstad. Congratulations. <laughs> President Frame, members of the Board of Regents, faculty emeriti, Distinguished guests, members of the Augsburg community, alumni, students, family, and friends, on behalf of the faculty at Augsburg College, upon whose recommendation these degrees are granted, and in their name, it is my privilege to present the candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science. Well, Mr. Those, President, me. Pardon in this 136th year of Augsburg College, I present the class of 2005. Will those who are standing for the degrees just indicated please stand? And now to those persons to receive bachelor's degrees by virtue of the authority invested in me by the faculty and board of regents and upon nomination by the faculty, having completed the requirements, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Candidates completing work for their degrees in August or December will likewise come forward with the others. Please be seated.
Uh, as you come forward with the marshals, um, and uh, 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 Provost Kimball announces your names, I wonder if you'd uh, take note of the fact that the chair of the board, Gene Taylor, who is helping me to congratulate you, stood in your place 20 years ago. And uh, we are grateful to her for her help. Um, I wonder if I could at least try, given the signs that are here, I may not be very effective at this, but I wonder if I could ask you to consider the possibility that coming right behind you is a name that is about to be announced into the wide um, audience here, but it won't be heard because you will be so cheered and helped by your family that that name will be squished out of existence in the, uh, in the sound. Now, that's, uh, that's an effort on the part of those who are standing in the flanks, but also those of you who are standing right in the middle of this, uh, to at least um, consider the possibility that we might move through this at greater speed and with greater politeness and manner, if we can do it reasonably quietly. Um, I don't mean to in any way threaten your joy. In fact, <laughs> <clears throat> in fact, I'm looking forward to being able to tell you when we're done with this that a, a little piece of the sun is out. I don't have that confirmed to me, but I'm hoping so. I will now read the names of candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science. After reading names of the candidates for the bachelor's degrees, three kinds of honors may be announced. First, Latin honors. The three categories of Latin honors, cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude, are based on cumulative grade point average, and in the case of summa cum laude, candidates will have successfully completed an oral examination performed in conjunction with the student's major department and my office. Candidates for Latin honors wear cords in their shoulders in the school colors maroon and gray. Second, Graduates who have completed the college's honors program curriculum will be designated honors program graduates, and these honors scholars wear gold cords on their shoulders. And finally, students who have completed special curricular requirements with a high average in their disciplinary area of study will be noted as having received departmental honors. Alan Weislater, Torin E. Kelly, Dustin B. Hazy, Michael Rieger, Ryan M. Silberberg, Benjamin Keyes, Jackson Buckingham, Matthew Robert Kleinschmidt, Amy Jo Erickson, Sarah Catherine Tam, Eric John Helgeson, Trevor Elliott White, cum laude, James Christopher Humbert, Jr. Zachary James Rosen, Ryan Leonard Weber, John Christian Pohl, Laura J. Bexell, Isaiah Anthony Perzitza, Kelly Lynn Gola, Matthew James Woolmut, Stephen Joseph Anderson, Stephanie Ann Ganzer, Aaron Lynn Holman, Wendy Victoria Lean Grimes, Katie Ann Troland, Amy Marie Blockstead, cum laude, Julie Elizabeth Kreese, Lisa Marie Narsborough, cum laude, Ilsa Marie Gall, magna cum laude. Jana Aaron Ford. Laura Catherine Ruder. Gina Linnea Sheraldi, cum laude. 
Chad M. Priggy. Mark Joseph DeCrons. Kim Jackland. Jacob Romero. Amy Lee Umtwight Seams. John William Grutter. Margaret Ray Lofboom, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Music, Honors Program. Emily Ann Dexter, cum laude. Sabrina K. Jury, cum laude, Honors Program. Michael Thomas Grohowski, magna cum laude. Brian P. Teschendorf, magna cum laude. Sarah Marion Emily May. David Scott Ebson. Jennifer Lynn Temple, magna cum laude. Shelley Lynn McCuskey. Stacy L. Whitwood. Christian Hallinger, Nicholas Crazen, Matthew Healy, David T. Peterson, Brad Robert Janilla, John M. Soroka, magna cum laude, Ronald James Barkowski, Daniel John Quantz, William Ryan Klotzbeaker. Star Zavoral Mahala. Justin Reynolds. Danny In Ho Zins. Sean Philip Tiedemann. Tyler G. Bestick. Jason Myers Orr. Julie N. McKenzie. Renee Marie Capistrant, Amy K. Graw, Maya Esther Golden, Alicia H. McMillan, Daniel Jeffrey Lager Hagemeister, Don Renee Zepper, cum laude, Rachel Von Bank, cum laude. Stacy Lynn Yanarelli, Sarah Ann Campbell, Tamara Lynn Huff, cum laude, Crystal Bryant Weimark, Jeannie J. Klein, Christy Renee Thermos, Kathy Jo Showalter, magna cum laude. Susan Mary Ryko, magna cum laude. Denise M. James Green. Eric Raymond Jarvey. T.J. Clausen. Michelle Elaine Case, magna cum laude. Gail E. Roofs, magna cum laude. Donald Richard Williams. Addie K. Lauder. Kendria Richardson Pittman, <laughs> Melissa Tower, Siona Sereno, magna cum laude, Catherine Gina Barge, magna cum laude, Tara Lynn Sievert, magna cum laude, Joanne Hazel Anderson, Bethany Jean Rogers, Joshua James Lise Mackey. Tara Ann Stemmick, cum laude. Catherine Mary Brunsdale, cum laude. Rebecca M. Pope, cum laude. Christopher M. Peets, cum laude. Elizabeth Ryan Merrill. Katarzyna Pruchnik. Jennifer L. Dean. Adam N. Swanson, magna cum laude. 
Joel Lee Wilkins Simon, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Economics. Megan A. Peterson. Jonathan James Crawford, magna cum laude. Aaron Michael Spahala, magna cum laude. Angela Olson, summa cum laude. Greta Helen Knebly, cum laude. Paul A. Sant. Daniel T. Vogel. Andrea B. Carlson, summa cum laude, honors program. Riley Scott Conway, summa cum laude, honors program. Ashley Karna Wiesman, summa cum laude. Kimberly Nicole Burkholz. Angela Van Binsbergen. Aaron R. Broly. Kelsey A. Dorf, magna cum laude. Ashley M. Sasek. Christina K. Larson. Rebecca Ann Welly. Matthew Charles Quayle. Jeremy Nelson. Jennifer Ann McGinnity, cum laude. Christina R. Ronane. Bonnie Joanne Costi. Corey Joy Gustafson, cum laude. Ricky A. Priggy. Jeanette Beverly Suzanne Reinertson, cum laude. Catherine E. Border. Jennifer Cotsmith Krause, cum laude. Thomas DeMeo. Christine Getke. Julie Bruce, magna cum laude. Whitney Marin Schultz, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors English. Brenda M. Kunin Schwartz. Zena Urbanski. Anthony D. Valls. Trin Nguyen. Emily Marie Cheesebrow. Catherine T. Moore. Amy Francis Barnhorse, magna cum laude. Andrew Hewitt Bardwell, summa cum laude. Rachel L. Ingleking. Robert My Brian Meredith. Claire Virginia Petri. Dulce Maria Oliva Monterubio. Stephanie A. Nichols. Marie Catherine Gibbs. Vanessa Rose Novak, cum laude, Departmental Honors, Communication Studies. Laura Catherine Backey. Ellen Marie Miller. Emily Eileen Dye. Molly M. Steens, cum laude. Emily Brianna Neer, cum laude. Kirsten Jenna Anderson. Felicia Nicole Brown. Shannon L. Shoneman. Bronwyn Shoshana Weisbrot. Sarah Ann Trebish. Amy, Annie E. Engelsberg. Triana Danielle Sathry. Rebecca Sue Luke. Nicholas J. Shum. Amanda Faye Niedert. Heather Lynn Kennedy. Kelly Joe O'Brien, cum laude. Jonathan Michael Martinson. Jason J. Haugi. Aster Tedesi. Alicia A. Ayala. Melva C. Holmes. Olivia R. Morris. Jason L. Schmitz. Clark James Athman. Brooke D. Dornbush. Yuri V. Bogdanianak, magna cum laude. Lucas S. Grant, cum laude. Osiel Campos. Renzo Amaya Torres, cum laude. Robert Amaya. Adam Lynn Mitcheltree. 
Brooke C. Summer, magna cum laude. Angela K. Schmidt, cum laude. Michael C. Bells. Kaylee Nicole Orth. Laura Jean Mallet, cum laude. Emily Unsun Dahlstrom. James G. Tuttle. Weston McGee. Daniel Joel Katz. Timothy M. Monahan. Zachary Chamberlain Greenewalt. Robert Sikas. John David Gottesleben. William Bartholomew O'Connell. Laura Lynn Proshek, Magna Cum Laude Honors Program. Corey Elizabeth Kriska. Ashley Christine Owens. Lauren S. Chesick. David Stephen May. Matthew C. Svidrin. Brad Bjorgum. Carl Robert Hubdy. Ryan S. Davies. Eric Jeffrey Young. Stephen Kolova Jr. Adam D. Perry. Alexandra Elizabeth Giesler. Virginia R. Louise. Joe M. Cullen. Ryan Richard Stroud. Mark Donald Matzek. Jesse Ryan Hertwig. Daniel John Fitter. Maura B. Nelson. Johnny Uchina Opara. Anthony J. Shaden. Lucas Olson Patterson. Jamar Eugene Esau. Marcus Allen Golson. Emily Pearson Burke. Madeline Christine Peterson, magna cum laude. Andrea Maria Lada. Robert Brown III. <laughs> Lanaya Banks Garcia. Jessica C. Evans. Sandra M. Evans, cum laude. Carla K. Sheepstra, magna cum laude. Cynthia J. Greenwood, magna cum laude. Kevin David DeRung. Catherine L. Seibert. Alice E. Grisset, cum laude. Megan E. Toth, cum laude. Najwa Omar Sakar. Christine Marie Jensen. Jackie Chow. Aaron Thomas Surprenat. Douglas Paul Otto. Cameron Loring Markworth. Ray McCoy. Nathan D. Roseanne. Sarah Elizabeth Lahr. Kate Elizabeth Kowakowski, cum laude. Sarah Ann Baufield. Daniel Aaron Hellerick, Honors Program. Andrew John Peterson. Levon Harlan Larson, cum laude. Marika Annalise Belusa, magna cum laude. Cassandra A. Jackson, cum laude. Becky Lee. Barbara J. Herting. Anna Elizabeth Kingston. Jennifer M. Kuykendall. Kevin K. Osi. Jennifer Lee Galvin. Kim Revelinsky. Athela M. Arguejo, cum laude, Departmental Honors Economics. 
Lalita Bernarda Zapata Armejo. Ana Gabriela Power, cum laude, Departmental Honors, International Relations. Joseph R. Carlson. W. Pike. Adam Peter Hoffman, cum laude, Honors Program. Nicholas Robert Sanchez. Benjamin Joseph Hill. Michael Roy Howard, cum laude, Departmental Honors Political Science Honors Program. Francis Ray M. Cristobal. Sean Mark Johnson. Casey J. Zilka, Jamie Ann Elizabeth Johnson, Julie Elizabeth Falbo, cum laude, Catherine Elise Bickle, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors International Relations, Tessa L. Flynn, magna cum laude, Honors Program. Sarah Rachel Smith, magna cum laude, honors program. Darby Elizabeth Lawrence, cum laude, departmental honors, theater arts. Holly Kristen Johnson, magna cum laude. Matthew J. Galloway, honors program. Bradley Dean Bourne. Kirsten Kukler. Emily Rose Engler, Departmental Honors, Theater Arts. Michael Patrick Kelly. Timothy Michael McVean. Ryan Sobolek, cum laude. Amanda Elizabeth Froiland. Ellen Christine Quitek. Emily R. Luneman. Allison Pearl Mulvey. Mikea Vu, Victoria Sue West, cum laude, Susan Anderson, cum laude, Lisa Ann Rasul, Angela Michelle Coulter, cum laude, Sarah Josephine Cole, Amber B. Nielsen, Whitney Fedig, cum laude. Eva Spillman. Christine Von Rossum. Katie L. Schur, magna cum laude. Departmental Honors Sociology, Honors Program. Emily Marie Greisel. Karen Joy Brenny. Tilda Bento. Chua Yang. Haku Yang, <laughs> Stephanie Ann Bellinger Bouchard, cum laude, Matthew John Kester, Stephanie Lynn Perkins, Departmental Honors Chemistry, Honors Program, Eric Brandel, Amanda Jo Zeman, Kirsten Diane Sorensen, Melanie D. Getch, Jeffrey Dan Moores, magna cum laude, honors program. Pang Vang Lee. Rebecca M. Chell. Kimi L. Hawkins, departmental honors, English. Evan E. Boyd. Carolyn Francis Herman, magna cum laude, departmental honors, English, honors program. Gurin Silty. Alicia Toy Manns. Dana Dezeal, Brittany Ray Fagan, cum laude. Cynthia Mary Hogerton, summa cum laude. Francis P. Rojas, Departmental Honors Psychology. Jeffrey Allen Shelburne. Todd R. Carlson. 
Michael John Brinkman. Nicole Dahl, cum laude. Russell D. Edmonds, cum laude. Sheila D. Cromer, magna cum laude. Goli Mengistu. Joan Marie Hedegaard, magna cum laude. Karen Marie Nelson. Mackenzie Cloud Brink. Michelle Ray Kidwell, cum laude, Departmental Honors, English. Heather Lee Green, cum laude. Mark Simmons. Babette Carol Chapman. Jamie Lynn Schiller, cum laude. Christy E. Evavold. Sia Shong. Abby Johnson, Amy Jones, Herman John Gonzalez, Stephen Peter Lucumbusho, Kyla Renee Rice, cum laude, Hannah Lynn Dietrich, cum laude, Departmental Honors Psychology, Anna Elizabeth Ferguson, Jeremiah John Kanabi, Honors Program. Carrie Ann Schoblum, Magna Cum Laude. Patrick G. Mar D. Martell. John Eric Munson Hokinson, Honors Program. Loy Tai Yuong, Cum Laude. John Hansford Christopher Staten. Anthony Ryan Geckler. Andrew Michael Held. Jenna Elizabeth Bracken, magna cum laude. Amanda K. Maleska, cum laude. Laura Jane Bunkowski, cum laude. Erica K. Shornstein, cum laude. Megan Ann Erishman, Kristen Renee Barstead, Ryan Garrett Parsons, cum laude, Natalie Sarah Shea, Allison Lorraine Cornell, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors Psychology, Aaron Joel McKee, Annie L. Holmstrom, Carrie Lee Afel Shipstead, cum laude. Christy Lynn Millering. Regina Marie Meyer. Cheryl Lynn Irvin. Casey J. Gilly. Kate Marie Miller, summa cum laude. Misty Dawn Koski. Andy Lee Mallon. Karen Elaine Hartz, cum laude. Denise Ann Fossen, cum laude, Departmental Honors Communication Studies. Charles R. Rusty Brace, magna cum laude. J. Ellen Lawrence, magna cum laude. Jeffrey D. Gustafson. Chad Merlin Hegestead. Paul W. Demmer. Starlene K. Heininger. Brian P. Hagen, magna cum laude. Susan Lee Auer. Catherine Ann Kloster. Caleb Paul Maunu. Derek Jason Schrader. Randy Lowell Julian. Catherine Lindsay Lloyd. Bethany Jo Schneck, summa cum laude. Departmental Honors Youth and Family Ministry Honors Program. Janice Linnell Adams, cum laude, Departmental Honors Psychology. Marcia Marie Guns. Faith M. Durham. Jessica Olson. Jean M. Johnson, cum laude, Honors Program. Jennifer Joanne Halverson. Brenda Amelia Grabau, 
Melissa Catherine Lee, Christine E. Ladine, Rebecca Ray Ruckel, Millie Ann Suk, magna cum laude, Kathleen May Cannons, magna cum laude, Kirsten K. Anderson, Nathan Swanson, Michael Richard Elasky, Lisa Marie Kopitsky, Mahalate Tomrat, Sentayu Abebe, Meiti Terfasa, Malata Work Burhe Walde Gabriel, E. Chen, magna cum laude, Enoch Mamo Tanaye, Timothy Carol Alexander, Hong Tan Nguyen. Congratulations. A fair number of your fans standing to uh, signal your, uh, uh, you their regard. I wonder if I could ask you to consider standing for a moment to say thanks to a group of people that are here, both your families and people in this college that have labored with you, I think, in joy in respect to the whole enterprise. Among them are 17 regents of the Augsburg College Board, the faculty of the college, the staff of the college, I wonder if you'd mind standing and saying thanks to them. And we, you may sit. I don't think it would kill us to stand once more and say thanks to you for coming here, for doing what you've done while here, and for representing this place with so much promise and so much achievement already. Could we also say once again thanks to this class of 2005. One piece of news that you may not have yet gotten is that you've now tr changed places and you've become alumni of the college and that has certain implications and to explain those implications to you is Bill Vanderwall who is a graduate of the weekend college and the first such graduate to undertake the chairmanship of the alumni board. Bill? Thank you, President Frame. I have one basic message today, and I'm going to keep it really short because I know you're kind of ready to go. But I want to welcome you, the newest graduating class of Augsburg. You are now officially called alumni, and you heard the President say it before. You should know that you've just joined an amazing group of people. Augsburg graduates are changing the world. Within this group, there are PhDs and physicians, United States congressmen and Nobel Prize winners, university head coaches and Lutheran pastors, social workers and CEOs, and communicators and teachers, and many more. Augsburg graduates are geared to lead and make a difference wherever their community is and however they define community. Augsburg graduates understand the phrase values proposition, but not necessarily only in a business marketing context. 
While here, you have developed critical thinking abilities, mastered basic skills, viewed the world with new eyes, and perhaps discovered your sense of place in the world, your vocation. You have been transformed. I think you've also experienced what happens when we put ourselves into service to others, to the community broadly defined. You can change the world. Perhaps it is the world changed for one child, or for residents of a homeless shelter, or a classroom, a boardroom, an operating room, meeting room, or a living room. There's always room for more service. So it's within the spirit of vocation and service learning that I invite you to keep connected to Augsburg. There's a community here, and we need all graduates to continue to build the neighborhood of Augsburg College. Your life journey continues. Remember your experiences and the important role that Augsburg played in your life over the last years. Others are following behind you, still attending here. They would benefit if you would make a connection with them in some way. So come back and volunteer in the many ways possible. Think about this as a lifetime connection. Get involved and keep a part of your world-changing efforts for Augsburg so that others may benefit from your knowledge and experience. Help build the community, the community of Augsburg. Thank you. I have very good news. We're going to say goodbye to each other in the park. The weather is apparently pleasant and uh, even partly sunny, believe it or not. It must have been brought out by all this joy. Um, so we will repair to the park uh, for more festivities. But I wonder if you'd mind standing once again, this time for the benediction. One person did not cross the stage today. Matthew Douglas Woodford was a part of our physician's assistance program and died tragically in an automobile accident in late December. On Thursday, a tree was planted outside the PA area in Anderson Hall in his memory. We do give thanks to God for his life and his incredible witness and we extend our prayers continually for his wife Laura, his daughter Madeline, and his very close family. Now we would ask that all people would remain in their places to enjoy the recessional until the entire company has recessed, and this is the order of recessional. First the platform party, then the faculty, regents, and students. In certain parts of the world, when people talk about their community, they will say, my people. So I'm going to use a benediction from South Africa today that allows us to think of ourselves as community, for we have indeed celebrated community in many ways here. Receive the benediction. Go, my people. You are ready to set sail. Your country is not here. You are a wayfaring people, strangers never rooted in one place, pilgrims moving towards an abiding city further on. Go forth, my people, go and pray further off. Love will be your song and life your celebration. Go, you are the house of God, stones cut according to the measure of God's love in Christ. Amen.